In your Bibles today, Galatians chapter 5, verse number 16, and where we want to read from there, it said, This I say then, walk in the Spirit, and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Today we want to look at, as we've been declaring kingdom blessings, today we want to look at walking or strolling in the Spirit. I want to show you how, through walking in the Spirit, you can get the upper hand in life. This year, God has told us to focus in on his kingdom. From Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, where it says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and all of his righteousness. Then all of these things shall be added unto you. Now, the Amplified Version, I want them to pull it up on the stream. Uh, Amplified Version, that verse is, Seek first of all, aim at, and strive for, first of all, the kingdom of God. And then all of these and everything, his right way of righteousness, God's right way of doing, God's right way of being, I like to say God's right way of thinking, and all of these other things will be added besides. Now the word added there is from a Greek word that means to be drawn. That is now, as you seek, there you go, they put it on the screen for me. They say, but seek, notice now, aim at and strive after, which means there's an effort you will have to put in. But it's giving you priority. First of all, his kingdom, not ours, not yours, not mine, not the country's, but God's kingdom. And his righteousness, his, I like to say, right way, his way of doing, his right way of being, his really his right way of thinking, because if you don't think right, you'll never be right. As a man thinketh, so is he. And then what? When you do these things, then all of these things taken together will be given beside. And I was saying the word given, the word added there is a word that means to draw. It means, I like to think of it as a magnetic force. As you seek, aim after, and strive after God's kingdom, you become almost magnetic. Everything you need is drawn to you. Got to remember, even before you pray, the Father already know what you need before you ask. So we get distracted going after the things. And therefore, many times, miss the same thing you're going after. And Jesus said, no, go first after the kingdom and God's righteousness. And you, when you find God's righteousness, you would have found Jesus Christ because he is the righteousness of God. If you're going to ever be righteous, you get it by faith. To take hold of everything God has for you, it starts with recognizing I can't earn it. I can't be righteous by calling myself doing right. I do right when I believe right. And so many times people are striving to do this and to do that, to pray two hours a day and do all those things as if that's going to make them righteous. And I tell you, righteousness is a, is a place of faith. You've got to believe that he who knew no sin, this is 1 Corinthians 5, 2 Corinthians 5, 21, was made to be sin for you, that you might be made the righteousness of God in him. And the more you understand that and the more you receive that I'm already right with God, that place of rest, that Jesus was talking about, come unto me, you that labor and are heavy laden, and I'll give you rest. Rest away from your striving. Rest. You rest in him. And the Bible says in Romans 5, that they that receive the gift of righteousness and the abundance of grace will reign in life as kings. All right, so we're talking about seeking first the kingdom of God, his righteousness, strive after. We recognize then that requires me to require some. Jeremiah chapter 29, please, verse number 11 and 12 in the Amplified Version of the Bible. You know, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you, says the Lord, thoughts and plans of peace and not of evil to give you hope and an expected end or hope in your final outcome. All right, watch this now. To give you hope, something to go for, something to believe for, something to expect. He said, I got thoughts and plans I have for you, thoughts and plans for good and not for evil, to give you hope in your final outcome. But he's tell us how to get it. He said, then you'll seek for me. All right? Pull up verse number 12, please. Then you will seek for me. You will strive after me. You will, watch this now. Then you'll call upon me and you will come and pray with me and I'll hear and heed you. Next verse, please. Then you will seek me, inquire for, and require me as a vital necessity, and you'll find me when you search for me with all of your heart. 
And so that's why I say you got to increase the antics of your pursuit of God. He said you will require when you require. We tell you all the time, you get in life what you require. Amen. You get in life what you require. But to get to the point of requiring it, start with what you admire, you will desire. What you desire, you will require. But what you require, you will acquire. And so the whole system of the world is working on that principle. Putting things in front of you so that you might admire them. And then go from admiring to desiring. Desiring means setting my will for it. Wanting it with a passion. Uh, having a mind to get it. And then requiring it. Once you require, they already know. If I can get the person to require that dress, to require that suit, to require that car, you'll swipe your car, you will write a check, you'll go scrounge up cash, you'll go in your children's piggy bank to get what it need, what you need to acquire it. Now, I'm, 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 we're going somewhere on purpose now because I wanted you to deal with, think about this word desire and requiring because when we go back to Galatians, when God said, walk in the spirit and you will not fulfill the lust of the flesh, you'll find lust pull on desires. Right? But here, a lot of Christians get thrown off. I know when I first really got serious about God, I was in Germany some years ago, and my God, they took Galatians 16, 5, they just basically almost wore me out with it. You almost couldn't do nothing in life because of that laundry list. Have you ever read the laundry list in Galatians 5? Let's go back over there for a moment. And so let's deal with this laundry list because all Paul is doing is showing us the kind of things that lust uses and the kind of thing that lusting after the wrong things will produce in your life. And then he goes on to say these things will limit what you will inherit in the kingdom of God. Now remember we're saying seek ye first the kingdom and all of his righteousness. But he's saying if you don't manage now the desires of the flesh, they will limit what you walk in in the kingdom. All right, let's go back to Galatians 5. Because last week we were talking about our dreams, and we said, hold on to your dreams. Amen? Tell your neighbor, hold on to your dreams. And don't let them go. And we find that if we'll hold on to them, there's a time and a season they will manifest. The dreams that never come to pass are the ones you give up on. The ones you hold on to. That word didn't agree with me to sit on it. Sit on your dream. There's always some of them lock into it and never let it go. Those always come to pass. Let's go to the laundry list in Galatians. Show you how they it used to wear me down with this. Amen. Galatians chapter 5. It used to scare me to even read these. Amen. All right, you ready? He said, verse 16, but this I say, then walk in the spirit, you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the lust, the flesh lusted against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these two are contrary one to another, so that you cannot do the things that you would. But if you're led by the Spirit or of the Spirit, you are not under the law or under the old covenant law in particular, any rules that people set on you to control you. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, envying, murders, drunkenness, reveling, and such like. So if it's not on the list, stuff like this. Tell your neighbor, that's what folks live at. All right, watch this now. He said, of the which I tell you before, and I also told you in times past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. But seek ye first the kingdom of God in all this righteousness, yet the folk that do these things shall not inherit it. And so the question come up is, if a Christian does these things, do they go to heaven or not? Did he say heaven in there anywhere? I don't even think he mentioned heaven. The kingdom of God is the dominion of God. It's the domain of God. It's the expression of God's kingdom in heaven being expressed in the earth. The kingdom of God is inside of you. 
The kingdom of heaven is to what? To bring that reign special. In particular, when Jesus come back on earth, he will reign the kingdom of heaven. Remember, kingdom or kingdom dominion is, is a, a, we can understand it from our country, from colonization, where the kingdom of England sent their, their emissaries to this land and others, and, what, and then what? Brought their kingdom here. So they wanted to expand their kingdom. God said, thy will be done in heaven, in the earth. God wants to expand what's going on in heaven, in the earth, through his ambassadors. That's why you are ambassadors of Christ. But an ambassador never represent themselves. An ambassador represents the one that sent them. An ambassador can't even say what they want to say. When I'm speaking as an ambassador, I have to say what I've been told to say, not what I want to say. I may want to tell you off. <laughs> but the governor from a country told me to tell you this. The king said to come tell you this. Are you, are you with me? But wherever the kingdom is being expressed, wherever you are, you function from the provision of your kingdom. You know, I travel the world a lot, and you, know, you go in different countries, you'll find American embassies there. Sometimes you go to some of the poorest countries and we'll have an embassy there and it won't be poor. The country around it is, but where that U.S. property is, and that's a good thing, wherever there's an embassy, that property will belong to that country that got the embassy. So that terra firma belongs to us. And in there, they're in the street, they're in tents. In there, they got houses. In the street, they can barely cook food. In the embassy, they got microwaves and stoves because... The provision for a kingdom come from the headquarters. So that's why you got to learn to look to the head from which comes your help. Your help. You are in the world, but you are not of the world because you are understanding. I got to know what, remember Jesus said, whatever is bound in heaven is bound in earth. Whatever you loose on earth is loosed in heaven. One version said, he got to already be loosed in heaven. So I got to know what God has for me from heaven that I can express on the earth. And so God came down to earth and told man to have dominion over the earth. And that's whatever my kingdom is doing in heaven, I want you to do in earth. That's why he gave us authority to speak, to name things. God was first naming things. He said, now, Adam, let me train you. Whatever you name it now, whatever you call it, that's what it's going to be. And whatever you're calling in your life is what you're having in your life. And as the scripture said, whatever you tolerate, it will be tolerated. So are you tolerating stuff? Come on, Wondering why God don't do something about it. Right. Look at the you the ambassador. <laughs> why are you tolerating it? And so this scripture tells us that they didn't do such things and don't look left or right, but people in this room do those things because that's life. That's stuff that happened for real. That's for real, for real there. All right, now here what we say. He said, you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. So what does the Bible say about the kingdom? The kingdom of God is what? It's not food and drink, but what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. So when you do those things, what happened to your peace? You go, your peace is out the window. You commit adultery, your peace is out the window. You worried, oh, she's going to find out, oh, my God. Your peace is gone. You engage in some of these things. He talked about what? Your joy is out the window. And you sure don't feel righteous at all in the time you do those. So you are not inheriting the kingdom of God, righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost, which allows you to bring the power of God on the scene. And so there's some things in the kingdom that you may not be maximizing because of these desires that you didn't stir up, but somebody stirred them up in you. 